Hi guys, it's KJM and I am back with another Countdown to Christmas movie review. Last night at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Hallmark Channel, Holiday Road premiered, starring Warren Christie and Sarah Canning. Now, here is what's really crazy about this, and Megan and I talked about it. The previews for this movie really stunk. It didn't do it any justice. We really just like didn't know what to expect, didn't think it was gonna be something good, and then it turned out to be pretty fabulous. I'm gonna start off by saying I'm giving Holiday Road an eight out of 10. Megan really loved it. I thought for a road trip movie about nine strangers that travel from Portland, Oregon to Denver, Colorado, I thought it was very smart, funny, creative. I could see these nine people bonding together. And honestly, I wanted to find the cast list, like the actual photos with the cast names so that I could give everybody a shout out. But when I was looking it up um, on Google, I could not find a page where you didn't have to scroll to see each you know, actor and their names. And there's just no way I could have fit it on this like screen. So shout out to the entire cast. All right, so what's ironic about this movie is this is the second time we see Warren Christie playing a character where he is trying to make it to Denver. If you guys remember, I think it was in 2008, Warren Christie starred uh, with Brooke Burns and Henry Winkler in The Most Wonderful Time of the Year, still one of my favorite all-time Hallmark Christmas movies where I laugh where he is on his way to Denver, Colorado, but then he gets stuck in Chicago and he finds love and he never makes it to Denver and it's just hilarious. Well, in Holiday Road, you may ask, does Warren Christie's character finally make it to Denver? And in this movie, he does. Nine people get together after a storm hits Denver and there's no planes, their flights are canceled and they now rent a van and they get in that van and they are supposed, it's supposed to be an 18 hour, you know, drive, but this road trip ends up taking three days because life is lifing. They have to make stops. Then there's an issue with the van. And, and you're seeing all this, you're not only seeing diversity in this cast, it's diversity in the characters and the, th the things they portray. Each person had a storyline. We had Maya, who was a young influencer, pretty much um, capturing all the moments of this trip. Then you have um, you have uh, Sarah Canning's character, Dana. She's got heart troubles and she's kind of a thrill seeker and she's the only one headed to Denver to like do some like, I don't know, when they drop you out the plane and then you start skiing or in a helicopter and you ski off some daggone mountain. She's a thrill seeker because she was born with a bad heart. Then you see there is Trisha and her son Ben. They're actually on the way to Denver to meet Ben's bio mom because Trisha is his adopted mom. And we see Trisha have a lot of little panic attacks throughout the drive. One, because she's claustrophobic, and two, because she's very afraid of losing Ben when she arrives in Denver. Then we see Des Dusty, the older debonair man, that kind of reminds us of a really cute Santa Claus, you know, but without the whole red suit. Dusty's on his way to Denver to see his daughter and we later on find out he's actually going to his daughter's gravesite. It broke Megan and I's heart when we realized that. Then you've got Amber. She's a bartender and she is a mom who currently doesn't have custody of her daughter. Her daughter is in Denver with the daughter's father and she's got visitation rights and it's her goal to make it there for Christmas morning so she could be there for her little girl. Okay, then you have this Chinese couple that just came from Hong Kong, Lei Li Ling and her husband. They're going to Denver, at least we think, to visit Li Ling's um, sister. But it turns out their estranged son has flown in from London and he is waiting at Li Ling's sister's house. And Li Ling wants to reunite her husband and their son because they've had an ongoing feud and she wants her family back together. 
What was so funny is that Li Ling's husband barely spoke any English and it really worked that she would translate for him, not word for word, when people would ask, what is he saying? Or she's ask, or he's asking what, what everybody else is saying from English to Chinese. And I thought that was such great comedic timing by the gentleman that plays Li Ling's husband. One of my favorite scenes is when Li Ling says she's got a karaoke machine with her. She travels with one because it's Christmas time. Baby, I loved it when they started performing their version of Jingle Bells in the Dag on Car. And they even give us a little rap flow to it, Lei Ling and her husband. It was just absolutely wonderful. And then in the midst of all these nine people bonding over a three day span to get to Denver by Christmas, we see Clay, Warren Christie's character, with Dana, Sarah Canning's character, also start to spark together. And their meet cute is actually really funny. Like in that Portland airport, he's online and he's giving this ridiculously diva-esque coffee order for a daggone coffee that don't even exist in the system. If you're somebody that does this, and you know there's 55 people behind you, let those people go first. Ain't no, nobody got time for you to make up a coffee and then for the system to figure out what it should charge you. Ridiculous. And so, yeah, these people are in a van and they are traveling and they are singing, they're stopping, they're supporting each other. And my favorite part is when they start to drop each other off to each other's respective homes or to whatever family and friends. And we get to see... Ben and Trisha re re reunite with, or I should say their first introduction with Ben's um, bio mom. And Trisha realizes she doesn't have to, she's gonna have to share Ben, but she is his mother. She is his mother in every sense of the word. So once again, it's another adoption story, um, you know, coming from Hallmark. And I love that because once again, there's different types of families. And it's so good that we're showing that diversity. I thought Holiday Road was just smart. It was wonderful. The cast had chemistry. So this is like maybe the second time I'm saying that this countdown to Christmas season. This is one of those things where not just the two leads have chemistry, but the cast does. We see Dusty bonding with Amber, um, you know, as she is talking about wanting to go visit her little girl. And then we later find out that, you know, he lost his daughter three years ago and his goal was to make it to her gravesite by Christmas Day. Ah! And then we see that Amber is reunited with her daughter and then she shares that reuniting, um, you know, event with Dusty. So it almost seems like he may have a new family on the horizon and he gives them money so that Amber can be a more, a more financial provider for her mother. Even though Dusty points out that being a parent is more than just about financially providing. And he said that this was an area that he failed in when his daughter Annie, I think, was alive. This was just deep, it was funny. Um, there were moments where they stopped in some sort of elf town and everybody's like dressed in all these cosplay outfits for Christmas and we see these characters really emerge. We see them perform, you know, perform uh, in a competition and support each other. We learn about Dana's heart issues and everybody is rallying around everybody, whether it's meeting the, um, the bio mom, whether it's, you know, uh, reuniting with your estranged son that usually lives in London, um, whether it was just going to a grave site and, and having some closure and sharing some love in that moment. These people became family on the road trip and I believed it. That's the thing. Not every road trip you really believe that people are connecting. This cast was so freaking amazing that I honestly believe that they bonded and that's why I'm giving Holiday Road an eight out of 10. I think you definitely need to add it to your Countdown to Christmas 2023 must see list. Once again, shout out to this cast. And we found out that Amber knows how to sing. Baby, when she sang Amazing Grace for her karaoke song, acapella, baby, I was over here trying not to lose the last five lashes I got in my eyes right now. This was just brilliantly done and executed. And baby, we are so happy that Warren Christie finally made it to Denver, Colorado in this movie. And he found love on the way, baby. All right, it's KJM. 
See you at the next countdown to Christmas review. You guys let me know if you watch this movie and how you feel about it. And I'm out. Thank you so much for following me and commenting and liking.